I've often bemoaned how RPGs are really incompatible with my format. Unless I go for a really extended play session, all I really have time for is checking out the starter town and grinding up a couple of levels around the beginning area. And on these 8-bit RPGs, it can take a lot of effort to get over that starting hump. Kaiju Monogatari is a different kind of RPG. It doesn't have a starting hump. It has four of them. The big gimmick of the game is that there are four distinct characters that start out separated, you can freely switch between them, and at about the three or four hour mark, you start bringing them together. But that also means that I had four level one characters who I couldn't move more than a few steps from town. And that starting grind in Kaiju Monogatari was especially bad. But let's back up a little bit here. From the title, you might think that this is an RPG about fighting giant monsters. However, the box gives an English translation of the title based on the kanji, Shell Sore Story. And that's really more representative of what the game is. In the mythical kingdom of Shell Dorado, I see what you did there, Namco. There's a civilization of monsters that all have shells on their backs. The Demon King wanted the four elemental shells, and he was defeated. And since this is an 8-bit RPG, he's reviving. However, there's a prophecy that a weird creature will fall from the sky and wield the fire shell against the Demon Lord. That weird creature is a human boy, and the main character of the story. So the Kai in Kaiju is literally shells. The box for Kaiju Monogatari is different, too. It's an oversized cardboard box because it came with a lot of stuff in it. For example, this is the first Namco game to come with stickers instead of the top labels. Namco puts a sheet of stickers in with virtually all of their games going forward, and you'll find them stuck to just about everything when you buy Famicom games. It also came with a giant map of Shell Dorado, and four figurines representing each of the four characters. Copies of the game with the figurine are exceptionally rare. My own box copy of Kaiju Monogatari arrived the day before this recording, and I couldn't find any with the figurines in it. But besides the map, there was another reason I got a box copy of Kaiju Monogatari. Inside the game is this envelope. You're warned not to open it until the game instructs you to. As of this moment, I don't know what's inside that envelope. Let's open it together and find out. And inside that incredibly tightly packed envelope is another map. Looks to be like some late game dungeon. I'm speculating here, but I bet your party gets split and you have to use this map to bring them back together. Honestly, I was expecting a map of Japan for some kind of late-game twist. Now let's jump back into the parts of the game I could play. The human character that you name is always the first one up. And every character starts out in one of the corners of the map, getting their quest from a king. You can really tell we're in the Dragon Quest mode here. And just like Dragon Quest, you hit the A button to bring up a menu. Your options here are talk, Magic, Skill, Item, Stats, Location, Search, and Pass. There's no equipment, because as soon as you buy something, it's automatically equipped to that character. Talking is a bit different from other games. If you're not facing someone, you get the option to talk with the party. And of course, when you finally get your characters together, you'll get the option to recruit them. The personal skills are also important, that's how you save the game. However, only one of the characters has that skill. The location command is how you identify where you're at when you're wandering around on the world map. And then there's pass, the most important command. Pass is how you switch between characters. And you can do that pretty much at any time. Each time you select pass, you rotate to the next one. You name the human character yourself, but his default name is Ricky. He has the hero class, and gets some magic, but will spend most of his time hitting things with a sword. He has the fire shell. Koopy Koopy has the air shell, and they wear it on their head. They specialize in offensive magic, and are very weak physically. Koopy Koopy is the character that can save. 
The blue Poyon specializes in physical attacks. They have the water shell, and they can learn the special ability to teleport to random locations. Apparently there's a bit of a bug with that ability. It's supposed to only randomly teleport you to towns and castles where you've been, but it can take you to any of those in the world. Finally, Bob has the Shield of Earth, and they're kind of a middle ground character, getting a bit of attack and a bit of magic. Their special skill is Escape, which sacrifices health, but guarantees that you can get away from a battle. One issue with Kaiju Monogatari is that the early grind is brutal, and you have to do it four times. When you start out, you'll be able to beat one enemy by themselves, maybe two enemies if you're one of the physically capable characters. Maybe. Of course, most enemies come in groups of two, and even around those starting towns, they tend to have special abilities, like these guys can heal. Or worse, these slimes can poison you. Poison doesn't get healed when you rest at the inn, so when you get poisoned at level 1, you might as well just walk around until you run out of health. You'll revive back in town down some cash. Fortunately, you'll more than double your abilities by the time that you reach level 4. Unfortunately, that could take you up to an hour per character. And then, once you finally have a few levels under your belt, you can start trying to head toward each other on the map. I might sound down a bit on Kaiju Monogatari, but I don't hate it. In fact, I think there's a lot of very intriguing systems in this game that I couldn't engage with at all because I was stuck in the early game grind. In Japan, Kaiju Monogatari has a really mixed reputation. People like the unique spin on the Dragon Quest stuff, but the game is riddled with bugs, including some that are game killers. Like one that causes you to get attacked infinitely once you step out of a town. It's one particular town in that case, but not always the same town, so you have to teleport around that area, and hopefully it's not the final town which you have to go through to get to the last dungeon. Also, attack magic doesn't scale properly, so it's always weaker than weapons. Characters can just vanish, never to return again. And using Bob's escape ability can cause the game to crash. Despite those bugs, the game had enough fans that it got a lot of sequels. But they weren't from Namco. The developer Birthday took the sequels to Hudson. Those sequels started appearing on the Super Famicom. There's also a trading card game. And there's a game book that replicates this game. That game book is apparently quite the collector's item. It's one of the few game books based on a Famicom game that was written and illustrated by the people who made the Famicom game. Kaiju Monogatari is an interesting RPG. It's one that I think I would like to try out some more, even if there's a real risk of me crashing the game. 